This is our Bible study for Explore the Bible, June 14th. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Last week, we got to take a look at as Solomon was giving wisdom, imparting wisdom in Proverbs to his sons and also to the nation of Israel. And as we looked at that, we see exactly what wisdom is. It's taking knowledge and putting it into practice. It's more than just gaining knowledge and understanding, although that it's where it starts and that's really important. And he said that as a result of that, when you put it into practice, you'll have righteousness, justice, equity, fairness, and uh, but if you want those things, if you want righteousness, if you want justice in your community, if you want equity and fairness, it has to start with the Lord. It needs the foundation of God. And we saw that in verse 7 as he said, you are to fear the Lord, ah, reverence, fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and that is to that fear is to walk with God and so we understood from last week that it begins in a relationship with God that we need to be walking with God if you take a look at chapter 2 that kind of bridges in between 1 and 3 really this is several sermons it's a fantastic passage that takes us through Solomon parting to his sons he's saying I want you to seek out understanding and I want you to seek it out passionately as if you in an unwavering uh, with perseverance and faithfulness as if you were seeking out a treasure silver and gold and you can see that in chapter 2 as he lists those things and he says seek it out as a treasure pursue understanding in such a way that if you do there is a buried treasure of gold in your backyard you would dig and dig and dig until you found it um, pursue understanding this way and he says that if in a result of this if you will pursue understanding you will have a healthy fear of God and also you will uh, have righteousness justice and equity he says you'll have those things he repeats them again and he says this is your covenant relationship with God this is you walking with God but there's a problem and he's going to get into this problem and this is one of our favorite passages as we look at Proverbs chapter 3 we you know many of us want to carve out our own way we want to do our own things and when we were teenagers and young adults we wanted our own jobs our own family our own house and to do our own thing we didn't want bosses over us as much uh, but yet we still have those things but uh, God wants to put it in perspective and Solomon to his sons in Israel to say you know what there is a way that you should follow and it will help you it'll be for your good but the problem is we want to turn to our own ways and there's consequences to that so our question today is what is the right way and who do you turn to when it comes to uh, trying to find out what are the right ways in life um, when we see these consequences they can uh, destroy they can hurt uh, and they can hurt us in life and we can uh, we can in our relationships we can get burned um, it, can, it can destroy relationships that we have with one another and uh, sometimes even the consequences can be death in some of the actions that we take but God really does have us in mind and it's for our good it's for our benefit and he wants you to hear this Solomon wanted to impart wisdom understanding and say pursue knowledge in this way that there aren't these kinds of consequences but it again it begins with the relationship with God and you're gonna hear this over and over again from Solomon take a look at it with me now it's at Proverbs chapter 3 as we look at our scripture it says my son do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. These commandments would be the Torah, would be the uh, five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And he's saying, I want you to know God's word and keep his commandments. It starts with God. It starts with his commands and what he has instructed for us to do, not to in a wrong way Lord over us but to have a relationship with us and and to keep our path and our way secure and true um, there is only one way and it's with God and so as we take a look at this um, look at this beyond even just these uh, 
uh, these first couple of words before we get to our favorite verses of uh, five and six, he lays out, Solomon lays out a groundwork and it starts with God's word. Um, he would know this from his father, David, who, in, who wrote out Psalm 119. We see this in verse nine and 105 where he says, how does a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. And uh, he would say, your lamp is a word unto my, is a, your lamp is, a, is a, a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Uh, Jesus even said, as he quoted scripture as well, and he said, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is us following God's word. And it's not just a bunch of words written a long time ago. It's relational. It's a living word. It gives us more than just hope and instruction so that we can have understanding and live a good life. It, this is the character of God and who he is. And we get to see him for who he is. And I am so thankful that I have God's word. I have proved it over and over again that it is true that it is right, that it is helpful, and that I get to understand the person of God and who he is. Uh, so it starts with God's word. And he says in verse two, what results from this. And we see the characteristic and the fruit of the spirit of who God is. Verse two, the length of the days and years of life because of following God's word is what you'll get. And peace they will add to you. And do not let kindness and truth have leave you but bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart so we are to secure these things and write it on our hearts that we know and understand exactly who god is his word and and that will help us in our way of living life and it's peace it's kindness it's truth this sounds very familiar to you if you know Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, through Jesus. And so as we hear this, we need to know that it starts with God's word. And Solomon is imparting this to his sons and to Israel to say, write it on the tablet of your heart. Follow his commands. It's about his word. And he says in verse 4, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Here's what results. You have a good reputation in re relationship with God and also with men following God's words and his commands. Um, this is so important for each and every one of us. It affects our relationship with God and others. So let's move on to chapter, uh, excuse me, verse five and six. It says, now he goes into the heart of the matter this is, it should be, our heart should be following him. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He starts and goes right after his son's hearts and Israel's hearts that this is the, who you should trust in. You should be trusting in God more than anything else. Trust him with all your heart. And he says, uh, but, the, but he also uh, contrast this with ourselves because we want to trust in ourselves. He's going to go in verse seven. We'll see the same thing with our own eyes that we, what we see and what we want to trust in rather than God. And he repeats this, lean not on your own understanding. You know, our own understanding um, can be come from all kinds of different sources. Uh, they can come from different philosophies. Um, uh, I remember taking, uh, reading so many books and classes um, from philosophy of religions, looking at other religions, to study them and to know them. Um, and man, they get you sidetracked. That People will even get you off subject and get your mind onto other things. But our, the, what's so important is that we're not deceived by other philosophies, that we're not um, sidetracked by other books and other men's ways of thinking and other peoples. We, we spend so many times, so much time reading books, hearing from other people that we miss out on going back to God's word, hearing from the source and creator who created it all, who created us to give us understanding that we could ask, that we can seek, that we can knock, that we can know, that we can have true understanding 
about ourselves, about relationships, and about God, rather than what man says or anything else. Spend more time in prayer, more time in His Word, getting to know the one who says things. You, you don't ask, you don't get to know your children or your spouse by asking other people or reading books about them. You get to know them by spending time with them, quality time. And so my challenge to you, that's who you turn to. My challenge to you is to turn to God, to turn to his word, get to know him, see his characteristics, see how patient he is, see how gracious he is, see how kind he is. Look at the fruit of the spirit. That's what you see all throughout the Old Testament as man walked with God. But we want to trust a lot of times in ourselves. You know, the scripture says, and uh, I think it was uh, Psalm 27, said some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. I want you to be able to trust in him. And Solomon says to his sons and to Israel, and I say to you, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Yes, he will direct your paths. This isn't um, that everything will be rosy, everything will be perfect, everything will be clear. And, and uh, you know what, as I've gone through trials and tribulations, even in this last year, I learned to trust in God every moment, every day. And I grew closer to him, more dependent on him, like a child would to a father who's holding his hands through a dark alley. Man, I got to learn to trust in God. And I challenge you to do the exact same thing. You will grow closer to him. You'll gain further understanding about yourself, about God, about the world in which we live in. You'll have a deeper passion and patience for people who are difficult to love, who are sometimes you can be impatient with. And you can say, you know what? God, give me the eyes to see, ears to hear, the mouth to speak and proclaim your truths, who you are, and, uh, and to be able to proclaim that Jesus really does love us, that God loves us, that he gave his one and only son. We should trust in him in such a way. He will direct your paths where he wants you to go for his glory, but also for your benefit. It's for his kingdom's sake of which we are a part of. That's the result. You want his direction. Now look at verse 7 and 8. He says, Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You know what? Many of us, we, are, we think we're wise in our own eyes. We see things how we want to see them. When we don't always get a clear picture of what that looks like. You know, the heart is deceitful. Uh, emotions go up and down and they change and they deceive us as well. And um, also, we, our understanding also can fail us and we can miss out um, in, uh, in seeing the forest. We don't see the forest through the trees. We don't see the big picture of what's going on in life because we don't have a great understanding as God does. And, and we can gain understanding by walking with him, by understanding him. You know that this man seeing, in a, seeing uh, his own ways, do not be wise in your own eyes. This is said in so many scriptures. It's, the warning is all throughout scriptures. It's in Proverbs, again, 21.2. It's in 16.2. It's in Isaiah 53.6. It's in Isaiah 5.21. It says, each has turned to his own way. Every man's way is not right in his own eyes. It says this in Judges 21, 25, Deuteronomy 12, 8. It's all throughout scripture that man keeps turning to his own way rather than living according to God's word. As Jesus said, you don't live on bread alone or the philosophies of this world. You live on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, not your own eyes, not your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. And so he says, do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord. That's walk with the Lord. But holy reverence and awe, that fear is also a fear, as you, a child would even have to a good parent who disciplines, and he's going to get into that. But this is, we should fear the Lord and turn away from evil in this world. And he goes on in verse 8 to say, it will be healing to your body. It will be refreshment to your bones. That's the result. We'll have peace with God, understanding, we'll have kindness, we'll have truth, and this will uh, help us so much in our relationship with God 
and also others. But look at with me, he says, uh, verse 9. Not only is he given all this to us, he expects us to give back. And he says in verse 9, Honor the Lord from your wealth, boys, and from the first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. What he is saying is, he goes, I want you to gift. I, I want you to um, continue to do your tithe and your offering back to God because God has is, is, is bestowed so much upon you. If you were to look back at what it looks like to be a cheerful giver and the words that you might be po possibly to say, you could look back at the original tithing passages and uh, you can see it in Deuteronomy 18, but you also look at Deuteronomy 26 if you want to with me. It says this, this is where you're to give those first fruits and here's the instructions and here's the cheerful giver coming from your heart unto the Lord what it looks like because he's given you so much. He asks just for a little back that you get to say, hey, here's a sacrifice if I want to give to you and it comes from first fruits, not the last, but it's the best and it's first. He says, he says uh, after you've given it to him, verse five, you shall answer and say before the Lord Yahweh your God, my father was wandering, and I'm going to summarize this. My father was wandering, and he went down to Egypt. He sojourned there, became great and mighty and populous nation. This is Israel as they grew from Father Abraham. But then they became enslaved, he says, verse 6. And then we cried out as a nation before God as we were enslaved. And God heard our cry. Verse 9, then he brought us out of, out of slavery and out of Egypt to the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. In verse 10, he says, now we gave, we give back to God, knowing what he's already given us in this land and even more. And as a result, he says in verse 10, they worshiped. Verse 11, this says they rejoiced. In verse 12, it says, we give back a tithe. We give to orphans and to widows and to so and others that are sojourning and strangers that we give to God and we give to others. We give this sacred portion back to you, God. And then he says, he goes on to say, here's what our hearts should look like. Starting in verse 13, it says, I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments, God. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor have I removed it while I was unclean, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of the Yahweh my God. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us and land flowing with milk and honey as you swore to our fathers. This day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have today declared the Lord to be your God and that you would have walked in his, that you walk in his ways and keep his statutes and listen and his commandments and ordinances and listen to his voice. The Lord has today declared to you to be his people, a trans, a treasured possession as he promised to you and that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above all nations which he made for praise, fame, and honor that you shall be consecrated, set apart people to the Lord Yahweh your God. Isn't that awesome? We get to make those kinds of declarations. This is who we are. And as a result, he directs our paths. He blesses us for doing so. And our barns will be filled. Our vats will be overflowed with new wine. But he gives a warning to us that we are, that there are consequences, but also that he's a father who loves us. And because he loves us, he will correct us. He will show us where we are in our wrong. Look at verse 11 and 12. It says, my son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof, his disapproval. For whom the Lord God loves, he reproves, he disciplines, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Yes, God will correct us. He will discipline us because he loves us. As a father would discipline a son, it's for our good. It's for to set our paths right, to, to carve out exactly where he wants us to go in a relationship with him, our community, and with others. Lord, Lord God is so good to you and me. 
And I want you to be able to trust him, but it begins in his word. His word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And we should live on everything that comes out of his word. And we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts, leaning on our own understandings, then all our ways acknowledging him. And the promise, he'll direct your paths. It's for his kingdom's sake. It's for his glory. And we get to glorify in that, as we saw in Romans as well. And it's because he loves us that he will discipline us and carve us out into the likeness of his son. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. And we ask that you continue to do this. Lord, may we not follow in the ways of our own understanding and our own eyes, but trust in you, God. Uh, Lord, I pray that each and every one of us can say that we are walking in your ways and make that kind of confession that we give back to you what you've so given so much to us. You've given us salvation through your son, Jesus. And Lord God, that we can trust in you every moment, every hour of every day. And Lord God, as a result, others will be blessed and they can exalt your name and lift you up. God, find us faithful and obedient, trusting in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. Again, we'll have our Bible study next week as we look at the next couple chapters. And you have a great week.